Hey everyone, my name is Daily Mew Mew. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. We are on the first case, my first turnabout. And last time we left off, we did a little test. We passed it to help our nerves, even though it didn't help. And we've learned that the victim's name is Sydney Stone. She was killed by a blunt object, as we saw from the cutscene of the video. And... Phoenix is still extremely nervous and our client is overly dramatic. But let's get into it anyway. I just realized I saw my mouse in. The little thongle thing. Or the thong or whatever the heck you want to call it. Can't remember what that's called. I still haven't plugged into my computer even though I'm not using my mouse right now. Okay, there we go. Well then. You guys can, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah, you should be able to. The music is really loud, I just want to make sure. Okay, well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Ping. Yes, your honor. Your honor. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still on that. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you care to explain to the court what that object was? Oh god! I just knocked over my microphone. I'm so sorry. The murder weapon was the, the statue of the thinker. The thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. I'm sorry, I'm a little hungry and I need to eat. Okay. Okay, so you can't see on the bottom, but... It has been added to our evidence with the bat the attorney's badge and the autopsy report. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the uh, the trial. Okay. The evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. I will be showing this off later because I'm pretty sure we're gonna need to go down. Here at some point, and I'm gonna show some other stuff once we get a little further in this trial. So I'm not gonna switch screens right now, but I will show off the evidence later because we're not done yet getting some evidence. Okay, Mr. Payne, the, pros the prosecution may call its first witness. The, pros the prosecution calls the defense, Mr. Butt, to the stand. Oh dear God. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Oh dear god. I think we have a problem then. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Yeah. I don't see that. Why? <clears throat> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Dang, starting out strong. Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet. We were Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um. Do I need to point out what's wrong with this picture? Oh dear. Well, it looks like this is going to be fun. Hmm. Nat. Um, didn't they all- Yeah, didn't they all die? That was wrong with the picture right there. <laughs> uh. I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or see me. Ever. Poor Larry. What's it to you anyway? <laughs> Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by a dumped. I mean, unfortunately, paint's not wrong, so. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. Oh dear. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it! Lies! I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. 
According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Okay. Hmm. Indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude! No way! Poor Larry. The victim was a model, but, not, but did not have a large income. It appears she has several sugar daddies. Dude, don't say daddy. Daddy's sugar? From him it sounds weird. Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Interesting. Dude. We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stones was. That's a little harsh. We don't know why she went into that. I mean, I know sometimes, you know, they're like, some girls who have sugar daddies are concerned gold diggers because, you know, they're like, ugh, I don't really want to do work or anything. But sometimes it can be where, like, they have to kind of, like, go to that to financially support themselves. So we don't know her situation, you know? Anyway. Tell me, Mr. Butts. What do you think of her now? This is evil and terribly mean. Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. We can clearly see that. Should I... Wait and see what happens? There's two answers on the bottom of the screen. I realize you guys can't see that. Or stop him from answering. Uh... We should probably stop him from answering, even though no matter what happens, the same thing's gonna happen. He's gonna answer anyway. But we can at least bring logic into the situation. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. The question is irrelevant to this case. <laughs> Dude! Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That she and she dog. She dog. I think what he means she's a dog, but you know. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Here we go, being dramatic again. Uh, yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bomb of this. Oh dear, Larry. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? Technically, it's not that bad. He said in the afterlife, so. But still, it sounds bad. I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh dear. Oh boy. This is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Ugh, Larry. Well, did you or did you not? Heh. <laughs> Well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. He went. What do I do? We should have him be honest, because at least, you know, he's not lying. Because lying is still, uh... If you lie on the stand, it's still illegal. So, at least we're having him be honest. Have... Uh, there's two, uh... Qu choose answer him honestly or stop him from answering. We're gonna have him answer honestly. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. How did he get that from that? Er, uh, yeah, yeah. I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Bucks? Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So I liked- I didn't see her. Ugh, I hate his ADDICTION! I could do with that easily. Your Honor, the defense is lying. Lying? Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Oh dear. We're in trouble. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defense fleeing the scene of the crime. Dun dun dun! 
gonna have a chip. Have you guys ever tried white cherry Cheetos? They're delicious. Order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call the and call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> this is bad. On the day of the mur murder, my witness was selling newspapers, newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Shawit to the stand. It's kind of also another like trick with words. It, it, it his is Frank saw it. Get it? okay, Mr. Shawit. You sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Honestly, the year this game takes place is in 2016, because um, it came it came originally out in 2001, and this game takes place in 2016. Now I must tell you, I've never seen people really sell, go door to door to sell newspaper subscriptions, but that just could be me. I don't know if they actually still do that or not. So I just find this interesting. But it's it's kind of interesting seeing a game that takes place that's supposed to take place. 15 years in the future than when it's supposed to be, and then we get to 15 years later. I, I know it's been past 15 years, but we get to 15 years later, and things are a lot different, so. But then they also kind of cover for that, which is kind of cool, so. I'm just saying it's interesting. Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. I don't like him, I don't trust him. Something about his grin seems evil. Then also we saw the beginning of the cutscene, so we know he's the culprit. Mr. Shawit, you may proceed with your testimony. With your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Right. This should be fun. Witness testimony. Witness account. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must have been in a hurry because he left the door half open, half open behind him. Thinking it, it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I crawled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Now, this is kind of interesting. How was he not be able to... He couldn't go inside, but how did he call from her apartment phone? I went to the nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 o'clock p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Shawit used was one of those. I see. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your pursuit. Okay, so we have that added to our court record. Now, Mr. Wright. Y yes, er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, all right, right. This is it, the real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why? You're, you exposed the lies in the testimony that the witness just gave. Lies? What, he was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then the witness must have, ha have lied in his testimony. Or is it your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. 
Compare the witness testimony to the evidence at hand. Gotcha. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you found the contradiction, the contradiction evidence, present it and rub it in the witness face like, like salt in a wound. She gets fierce. Um, okay. Touch the court record button to point out the contradictions in the testimony. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this video right here. If you guys like it, like it, subscribe to me, maybe leave a comment down below. With that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day with life and in the name of our Saint Earth, I will see you guys in the next video where we will continue on questioning Frank Shawit. Bye bye!